So in this video, we are going to discuss uh, some uh, some more examples. So this is an example where uh, there there won't be an LHS. So when something need to be like when some valid statement is given, always like it is going to be true. When these kind of statements are given, how are you going to prove it using your natural deduction method? Okay, so let me take some examples. So first example is P and Q implies P. So there is no LHS. What does that mean? There is no premises given. So we have to take an assumption and based on the assumption, we have to derive to a conclusion. And what assumption you're going to make? See, you have an implies. So whenever you have an implies, what we do? Like we take the left-hand side of implies as an assumption. So we take P and Q as an assumption. And with that, what we have to do? We have to prove it to be P. So we have to check that P is valid. Now, when P and Q is valid, then surely P will be valid based on and elimination of step one. At what time this P and Q will be valid? When both P is valid when and Q is valid, then only P and Q will be valid, right? So with that, by and elimination of step one, we can write it as P. So with that, what we can say, we start with P and Q and we derive to P. So we can say that with implies insertion of step one to two, we can write it as P and Q implies P. Okay. So this means that you can make any assumption, any number of assumption as possible. Okay. But the assumption should not overlap. So whenever you have an implies and without any premises, there is no other go. We have to make some assumptions. And that assumption should be derived to something. So we'll take some other examples to know it. Okay, uh, the next example I'm going to take it is, there's no promo, uh, LHS, I'm going to prove it as negation P implies P implies P implies Q. This is very important. So now we have one, two, three implies operations. So how many assumptions we have to make? So first step is negation P, we take it as an assumption. And second step, I take P as an assumption. And third step, again, I have to take P as an assumption. So we cannot use both. Thing is like we have two implies. So to conclude both the implies, we have to take both the uh, thing as an assumption. And fourth step is, is it possible to take P and negation P to be valid? No, right? So there is no possibility. So with that, we can say that it is false. So by um, implies, uh, sorry, negation elimination of step one and three or two and three, we can write it as with that, we are going to prove that it is a false statement. So we started with one step and proven that to be false over here. So with that, what we can say that, I'm sorry. Of the step is, I want to conclude as Q. So conclusion as Q is by the rule of natural deduction. What is the last rule? Last rule is when you have a false statement, you can substitute as Q or S or P or any term as a, as a term in that. So when something is derived to be false, we can use any new term as a solution. So here you can use Q as a solution based on this falseness condition in step four. Okay, so with that, what we can say, this is one important rule that uh, we haven't seen any problem in it. Okay, so when something derives to false, you can conclude to any terms. That is the 10th rule in natural deduction. Okay, so now we started with P as an assumption derives to Q. So with that, we can write it as P implies Q by implies insertion of step three to five, right? So P and Q is done. Now, from this assumption to the sixth place, we can write it as seventh step is starting from P as an assumption, we derives to P implies Q. So based on implies insertion between step two to six, we can write this. And last is based on this assumption as negation P. Eighth step, we started with negation P as an assumption and it derives to this entire term, right? This term, 
implies insertion of step 1 to 7. So this is the conclusion that is needed. Okay, so you can make as many assumptions as needed, but it you have to try to conclude it appropriately. So that is very important. You cannot overlap or mismatch your natural deduction rule. Okay, only valid terms can be proven like this. Now the next example I'm taking is this one. P implies Q implies R implies S implies P and R implies Q and S. Okay, so another important problem. So now how many major implies? So this is one term and this is one term and this is one term and this concludes to Q and S. So majorly I have here as an implies, I have here an implies and here an implies. So inbuilt implies will leave it. Okay, so I have to make three assumption and the first assumption I'm going to make it is P and Q, the first term as an assumption and second term is R implies S is the next assumption I'm going to make and third assumption is P and R is the assumption. So with these three assumptions, I'm going to prove it as Q and S and with that we can conclude it. Okay, so now uh, we have P and R, fourth step is, I have P and R to be valid. So when, by using and elimination of step three, I can write it as either P or R, right? And elimination of step three, P and R is valid only when P is valid and R is valid. So I write both the terms over here. And sixth step is, I had P. And I can break P implies Q and I can write it as Q. By implies elimination of step one and uh, four, I can write it as Q. And um, what all term needed? S is also needed. S is bounded over here. So it is bounded as R implies S and I have R over here. So the next step is by implies elimination of step two and five, I can write it as S. R is here and R implies S is here. So with that, we can break it and you can write it as yes. Okay, so now Q is valid, S is valid. When both the terms are valid, how can you write it by and insertion of step six and seven, I can write it as Q and S. This is your eighth step. Okay, so now what we have to prove, we started from this assumption and we derived to the term Q and S. So with that, how can you write it? Ninth step is, uh, we started with P and R. P and R and it derives to Q and S. So that is given, right? We started with P and R and that derives to Q and S. It is done. And next step is overlapping this assumption. We started with R implies S as an 10th step is we started with R implies S as an uh, assumption. And with that, we have concluded as P and R implies Q and S. Okay, so this is the next implies con condition. Like you, can, you have to write the statement over here by implies insertion between step two to nine, we got this. And similarly, implies insertion between the step one to 10, it reserves, it says that P implies Q implies all this term. Okay, so this is how an implies insertion works. When it is an implies to be inserted, take this one side element as an assumption and try to prove it. Okay, thank you.